Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video, doing JMA Friday for today's first video. So, as always, on a Friday, we're going to have your month ahead and look ahead with Japanese and CFSB 2 miles. This, of course, is going to take us through most of March, given that we are now at the very end of uh, February. Uh, so, I'll get on, get on for you very shortly. Just say that the second video update coming up later on this afternoon will be your regular week 10 day video update. That will have all of the usual features, including all of the latest developments with Storm Jorge. So, we'll have more about that um, this afternoon. And then tonight, Right, we're going to have this month's Enso updates. A busy old day at Gasworth is. Don't forget to give us a like on videos and let us know that you are enjoying them in the comments. Uh, so, before we do anything else, I've got to say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. So, uh, our latest donor, uh, one of his favourite videos, he tells me, is JMA Friday. And uh, so, I thought we would say hello and thank you very much to... Uh, Michael Hall, our latest PayPal donor, Michael Hall, uh, with today's JMA Friday. So thank you so much, Michael, for becoming our latest uh, donor for Gaza. Like big, big thank you to you for doing that. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the videos. Hope you're enjoying uh, JMA Friday in particular. Big, big thank you, Michael, uh, for doing that. If you'd like to become a PayPal donor uh, and uh, give a donation to Gaza, all you need to do is come to Gaza's PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account, and then you can give a donation, how much you want, to Gal Service. You'll get a mention in videos as long, of course, as you want one. If you'd rather stay in order, then that's absolutely uh, fine and uh, no problem. If you would like to become a patron of the Gal Service, you can come to Gal Service's Patreon page, and you can sign up for a Patreon account, assuming you don't already have one. Uh, I mean, that's how you become a patron, guys. We've got 61 patrons so far. So, hello and a big thank you to our 61 patrons. Again, we hope you're enjoying the content. We hope you're enjoying what we're doing at uh, Gals Web. If you'd like to become uh, a patron, then I say all you need to do is come to the Patreon page and sign up for a patron account. Then you give an ongoing monthly donation to Gals Web. It could be anything from $1 a month upwards. And uh, again, you got to mention in videos, you do it through PayPal or Patreon. We'll give you a mention, give you a shout out. Say thank you so much uh, for doing that so um big thank you to all of our patrons and big thank you to all of our donors for helping us to pay for galswebbies.com and keep the content online so a big big thank you to everybody for doing that and of course a special thank you to michael hall and uh, we hope you enjoy this jma friday michael Right, so let's start off with the 500 millibar height anomalies from the JMA from the North Pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Arctic just here. And we've got the wider Arctic around there. And then, of course, we've got mid latitudes around here. These are broken down to weekly periods. The first weekly period is going to take us <coughs> excuse me, from the 26th, uh, from the 28th, I should say, of February to the 6th of March. Um, and uh, blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure, yellow, orange, and red, to above average heights, which is high pressure. So in the coming week, it still looks very unsettled. Uh, low pressure goes on, got above average heights sitting to our south, it's been all winter. Below average heights are up to the north, we're bringing in a strong westerly jet stream. On and on it goes. That looks like another very unsettled week. Potentially quite cold as well at times, as the air will be coming out of Greenland across the North Atlantic with that trough of low pressure. So yes, it could be not only very unsettled, but also quite chilly. There may be some snow, especially over high ground. All change, though, for week two. This is the 6th to the 13th of March. And uh, this week, we start to see above average heights building. So high pressure starts to get going over not only the UK, but much of northern Europe as well. Below average heights are low pressure being pushed out to the northwest. Jet stream doing something a bit like that. So it's settling down. Now, it may not be all that warm because I think around this area of high pressure, we're probably going to be bringing in something of an east to northeasterly flow, if anything. So it may not be that warm. Could actually be a, be a bit on the cold side, maybe with overnight frost. But certainly that will break us out of this very unsettled spell that we've been in for the past several months. That would settle things down and allow us to start drying out a little bit. And then weeks three and four, going from the 13th to the 27th of uh, March, also has above average heights almost centred over top of the country. So 
on face value, it looks like that should be uh, a mainly dry couple of weeks of the second half of March as well. Bear in mind, it's a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be transitional. There could be some unsettled weather coming along at some point, maybe Let's say high pressure still dominates in week three, and then week four, the ridge begins to break. It starts to turn more and settle. Something like that could be going on in mean, a two weekly anomaly. But overall, that does look rather anti cyclonic for the second half of March. And so you would expect probably a dry of an average March in the end, despite that very, very unsettled start. These are the tropical and mid latitude view. So, British Isles in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. We're just there. We can't see the pole and the Arctic region or Scandinavia, those sort of areas there off the chart up here somewhere. But uh, we know what's going on because we had a look at that view down. So, we know that, for example, in week one, which comes back to the 28th of February to the 6th of March, very unsettled. Low pressure is driving in from off the Atlantic, quite a strong jet stream coming in. Uh, from the Atlantic as well. So for week one, for the first days of March, it does look still very, very unsettled. And a bit on the cold side as well. Temperature anomalies are actually coming out a little bit below average for northern and western parts of the country and near normal uh, further south. So this does look like a rather cold start to March and very unsettled. Low pressure really powering in from off the Atlantic. So yes, above average precipitation. Cold and wet really to uh, begin spring 2020. But then we go through to week two, which did look like quite a significant change. Uh, a moment ago, this is the 6th to the 13th of March, with the above average heights then building across much of northern and western Europe. Does that turn us drier? Well, we see that for northern areas, it, the precipitation anomaly is still a little bit above average. For England and Wales, it's going drier, much of central and western Europe also going dry. So it's not an immediate change, actually. Even then, in this week, in week two, it could still be a bit unsettled for a while up in the north, particular. But eventually, we do start to go into drier conditions. Temperatures are lifting up as well under this ridge of high pressure. Not quite sure it can be that mild, really, but it is going for above average temperatures by around one to two degrees. So if we, if, if we just take the raw model output, it looks like it's going to go a lot drier uh, through this week up to the middle of March and it also looks like it's going to go a lot mild as well. I'm not sure it'll be that mild though. I think we could be rather chilly. It'll depend greatly on the exact position of the high pressure of course. And then in weeks three and four we have the high pressure sitting over the top of the country with the JMA going from the 13th to the 27th of uh, March. That leaves us with near normal to slightly above average temperature anomaly. So probably coming out mild and average this March overall if the model is right. Um, precipitation wise it doesn't completely settle down even in these two weeks for northern parts of the country. A precipitation anomaly is still a little bit above average. So England and Wales is drier now. So I'm not, again, not sure about that. I would suspect it would be a little bit drier than the model is expecting, but maybe not quite as mild. Um, but anyway, definite hints, no more than that, but definite hints of something drier for March with the JMA. But let's see how the CFS V2 compares. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, broken down into weekly pairs of the first weekly pair takes us from the 28th of February to the 5th of March. Perfect agreement between the two models for this uh, week one period. Malay average heights again over and to the west of the country. A strong westerly Atlantic jet stream uh, moving in from the west and uh, just very unsettled and potentially a little bit on the cold side as well as the wind is coming out of Greenland over the North Atlantic. So cold and unsettled for the opening days of March. Week two is the 6th to the 12th of March with below average heights then pushing a bit further northwards, above average heights building to our south and southwest. Still keeping the jet stream westerly and probably still quite unsettled for the north. For the south, it may be starting to turn a little bit drier though there through the second week of March. And then we get through to week three, which is the 13th to the 19th of March. And then definite size of high pressure becoming more influential above average heights extending in from the Atlantic into much of central western Europe. Low pressure being pushed further northward still. May still be some influence from rejection for northern parts of the country. But overall, it is getting, uh, we are getting a stronger anticyclonic signal. 
it looks like it should be starting to settle down. And then we go through to week four, which is the 20th to 26th of March, with above average heights then centred over and just to the south of the country, below average heights up to the northwest. That looks very spring like. Jetstream doing something. Uh, a little bit like that, and uh, we bring wind up from the southwest, so that should be very, a uh, very mild end to March, and hopefully, particularly for England and Wales, uh, a lot of dry weather. We may keep influences from the jet stream mode for northern parts of Scotland. It may never truly settle down there. We'll see in a moment. Uh, the temperature anomalies for week one from the 28th of February to the 5th of March. Near normal to maybe a little bit colder than average, particularly for northern and western parts of the country. Week two temperature anomalies from the 6th to the 12th of March. Becoming milder across England and Wales, beginning to pick up. Still a little bit on the cool side for Scotland and Northern Ireland, maybe. Uh, then week three, which is the 13th to the 19th of March, average to slightly above average temperatures on the scale. We're up to around a degree above average, so it is a relatively mild uh, middle phase of March. And it turns milder into week four, when we start to drag up southwesterlies then. Uh, we're at the 20th, 26th of March, and then we're substantially above average, over one degree above average on the temperature scale. Precipitation anomalies start very wet for week one, 28th of February to 5th of March. Significantly above average precipitation. Yes, uh, a pretty cool and wet beginning to March 2020. Going closer to average with precipitation in week two from the 6th to the 12th of March. So a bit wet and average in the northwest, maybe. Uh, week three is the 13th to the 19th of March. Looking drier than average then to our south across parts of England and Wales, maybe going drier. Still a little bit wet and average over the far north and west of Scotland. And then by the time you get through to week four, which is the 20th to 26th of March, actually hinting at being a little bit wetter, particularly for northern and western parts of the country. That's as we started to pull up uh, a moist, a mild southwesterly wind, I suppose. And of course, that brings spring like temperatures. Uh, but it does bring the threat of some rain with it as well. So overall, we still have these hints of higher pressure uh, for March. So that's the good news. It looks like March should be quite a bit drier compared to... Um, to the months that have gone before. I mean, January was a little bit drier, but December, November, October, all very wet months. So we had an exceptionally wet uh, February as well. This is probably going to be the wettest February on record. What's just better get the phone? Right, phone answered, and uh, sorry about that interruption. So we're just summing up the uh, end of JMA Friday. So the upshot is it looks like we're going to have some higher pressure as uh, we go through into March. Definite signs that things are going to dry out quite a lot and uh, settle down. A fair amount, although the indication there that for the north, it never truly settles down, actually. The far north could stay quite unsettled throughout, but there are the definite hints there that things are going to get drier under this area of high pressure as... Um, as March goes along. So we shall see how it all pans out. But hopefully, hopefully we are seeing uh, light at the end of the tunnel for this horrendously wet spell of weather. Right, we shall be back later on with your week's 10 day video update. So come back for that then. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.